Please tell the person by your side, believe tonight, believe. No, look at the person and say, believe tonight. Tell the person, trust the Lord tonight, trust the Lord. Tell the person that in Luke chapter 1 verse 57, I think, I think one, Luke one fifty-seven. let me be very sure so that I don't quote something wrongly. Yeah, Luke one thirty-seven. Luke one thirty-seven. tell the person, for with God nothing shall be impossible. <sighs> Look at the person one more time. With God nothing shall be impossible. Now, with men, things may be impossible. No, just keep saying what I'm saying. With men, things may be impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, look at the person that said, if you believe, nothing shall be impossible unto him that believeth. Tell the person, you need to believe. You need to trust the Lord. Now, give us Proverbs chapter 3. Let's see 5 and 6. I think it's 5 and 6. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Now, let's read together by faith. Want to go. Trust in the Lord. With what? All your heart. Everybody say, with all your heart. With all your heart. Uh Uh-huh. And what? Lean not on your own understanding. Next verse. In all your ways. What did he say? Acknowledge him. And he will what? Direct. Tell somebody again, trust the Lord with all your heart. Even if it does not make sense, trust the Lord. Even if it does not sound well, trust the Lord. Even if the bank statement is not making sense. Oh, look at the person again. Even if your bank statement is not making sense. Trust the Lord. Even if what they are saying is not what you are hearing. Trust the Lord. With all your heart. Tell the person not partially. With all your heart. Tell the person not almost. With all your heart, everything you have, trust the Lord, even unto death. The Bible says we overcome. Join me. What's he talking? Tell the person we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and loving not our life, even unto death. Oh, man, that's a good place. Loving, loving our life even unto death. That is, loving not our life even unto death. Did you see that? Love their lives even to death. That's what I say. They did not love, loving not their lives even unto death. Tell somebody, loving not their lives even unto death. But we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. One more scripture for us to read. First John chapter 5. Let's read, I think, 4, if I'm correct. First John chapter 5, verse 4. Okay, that's it. Want to go? What? For? And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Please, can you give us KJV? Just KJV, not new KJV. KJV. Now, want to go? For whatsoever is born of God, does what? And this is the victory that overcome the world. What? Even, tell somebody, even your faith overcomes the world. Tell the person, then you are an overcomer. Oh, the person is not sure. Tell the person, you are an overcomer. You overcome sickness. You overcome bitterness. You overcome poverty. You overcome curse. Oh, you overcome death. Unnecessary death. You overcome. You overcome satanic delays. Oh, tell the person, you overcome satanic delays. Help the person say, you are an overcomer, sir. Oh, provoke the person, you are an overcomer, ma. 
Listen, from your birth, you are born an overcomer. Tell the person from your birth. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you became an overcomer. Are you tired of talking? We need to learn how to speak. I said, tell the person you are born of God. You are not born of the will of man, of the blood of man, or the desire of man. But you are born of God. And whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. I overcome the world system. I overcome the world pressure. I overcome Satan. I overcome demons. Now say this one with a loud voice. I saw Satan fall like a lightning. On my behalf, concerning my life, I saw Satan fall like a lightning because I have victory. Oh, I say, I have victory. I have victory over sickness, I have victory over disease. Oh, I have victory over oppression of the devil, I have victory over poverty. I have victory over lack, lack. I have victory over lack, lack. John chapter 1 verse 12. Be writing this thing down, church. The Bible said he came. He, the Bible said, but as many as receive him, what happened? To them what? He gave power to what? To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe in this name. Tell somebody I have power. power. Bible said, and if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive what? Power. Tell somebody I have power. power. Tell another person I don't have the spirit of fear. Tell the person I don't have the spirit of timidity. But I have the spirit of love. The spirit of power. And the spirit of a sound mind. Woo! Tell the person I have the spirit of sonship. Then I cry, Haba, Father. Father. Tell the person I have relationship with Jesus. Tell the person I'm a son of God. Oh, that's a good place. Tell the person I'm a son of God. Oh, I'm excited about that. I am the son of God. I'm not a son of man. My DNA is of God. So whatsoever that my father has not planted inside of me, around my family, in my workplace, if my father has not planted it, then it shall be uprooted. Oh, that's a good place to say, Amen. Amen. Let's just take one more scripture while we're declaring. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Write it down. Romans 8, verse 32. Can we read one, two, go? He that spared not his own son, uh huh, but delivered him up for what? For us all. Uh huh. Shall he not? With him also do what? Oh, what did he say? Freely. Now, that was a question. Now, answer the question because it's a question. Oh, no, no. Answer the question by faith. No, answer the question by faith. So you see that? He said, he that did not spare his own son, but he's asking you a question, but he delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him Freely, there's no cost but the cost of the blood. Not your blood, but the blood of Jesus. It's been paid for. Tell someone it's been paid for. Stop trying to pay. It's been paid for. Stop trying to work for it. It has been paid for. Stop trying to make it work. It has been paid for. My healing has been paid for. 
My healing has been paid for. My miracle has been paid for. My provision has been paid for. Take access. Take access. It has been paid for. Take access. It has been paid for. Shall he not deliver freely all things? All things. Second Peter chapter 1, 1, 2, 3. These are scripture that keeps your heart burning with fire. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Did you see that? With us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Let's read together. One to go. Through what? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Next verse. Verse 3. Uh huh. Oh, read it very well. According to his divine power, what? All things that do what? Now tell your neighbor, I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Woo! Tell somebody, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for anything. No, behave like somebody not looking for anything. I'm not looking for anything. Tell the person nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. You know, there's a way you are behaving as if you are looking for something that's gotten lost. No, no, no. Tell the person nothing is lost. I have all things. Oh, do I have faith people on this side? I want to say I have all things. There is nothing lost. I'm not looking for anything. That's why I'm not going from one mountain to another. I'm not looking for anything. I have all things. He said, all that pertain to life and godliness have been what? Oh, talk to me, church. Have been what? He said, through the knowledge of him had called us to glory. He has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things have been given. Philippians 4.13. Let's tie it up here. Then we go into it. Philippians 4.13. Oh, come on. Want to go. I can what? No, can you be able like somebody that can do all things? I can what? Woo! I can do all things. If your body is paining you or something, just say, I can do all things. Oh, if your mind is a bit way down, say, I can do all things. If some of you got a bad news, just stand up on your feet and say, I can do all things. If some of you have suffered any loss, just stand up and say, I can do all things. If some of you are expecting something that does not happen yet, just stand up and say, I can do all things. If some of you are still waiting for something to happen, say, I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh, say, I have the strength of God. Oh, I have the strength of God. In the inside of me, I have God's strength. Whoa, I have God's strength in the inside of me. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Are you writing this down? Sit down. Are you writing these scriptures down? You will need it. Joel chapter 3. He said, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spear. Let the weak say. Did you hear what he said there? Let the weak say. So don't say you're weak because you are weak. Say you are strong. Keep saying what you want to see. Stop saying what you see. Let the weak do what? Say. Tell somebody, say something. Say something. Stop keeping your mouth shut. Say something. Oh, tell yourself I'm strong. Oh, I'm not weak. I say, I say I'm strong. My body is strong. My family is strong. My daughter is strong. My son is strong. My business is getting better. My job is getting better. Things are working. My marriage is working better. Oh, tell yourself, I said I'm strong. Ah, my job is better. My vision is clearer. I can see better. Oh, things are happening to me on all sides. Great things are happening to me. Good news are showing up again. I am strong. I am better than yesterday. Oh, thank you, Lord. Alright. Put up our confession. Let's run it 
for one minute. Put up our confession of Sunday. Let's run it. Oh, glory to God. Tell someone, say congratulations. I just want to say that. Tell the person, are you getting ready for what is coming? Your good news is on the way. Tell the person, your good news is on the way. Your good news is on the way. Tell the person, nothing will stop your good news. All right, are we ready? Church, are we ready? By the time we're through with this thing up until maybe December, you'll be able to speak it from your heart, from your heart. You will not need to read this again. I want to so plant it so that when you are sleeping, you can hear it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You'll be hearing it, you'll be saying it. Because you will need it. One, two, go. Let's read. Yes. Yes. Saved. Made whole. Restore. Heal. Deliver. And preserve. I believe I have joy. And I speak joy. I believe I'm rich. And I speak wealth. I believe I am righteous and I speak righteousness. I believe I have peace. Be still. Uh -huh. I believe I have favor and I speak favor all around me. And what concerns me, I believe I'm alive. So I speak life. Hey, I speak uh, I speak joy. I speak wealth. I speak righteousness. I speak peace. I speak favor. I speak life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. Write it down. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. We also believe, therefore we speak. Church, we are entering to the season of believers. Uh, Pastor Bob, we've been always been believers. No, you don't understand. We're entering to the season where you will be believing even in the midst of your unbelief. Yes, Meaning that there will be so much unbelief around you, you will have to pull belief in the midst of unbelief. That man told Jesus, he said, Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. It means you can be around so many people that unbelief will become a barricade over your life. You will need to pull your belief system out of so many unbeliefs. That's the season we're entering. The season of believers. You will believe even when they say nothing is happening again. He said, I just believe. You will believe in such a way when they say, heat up the fire seven times more. He said, well, I believe. I know that the Lord that we serve can deliver us. But just in case he does not, we will still not bow to this graven image because I believe. Believers will not move because there's result. Believer will move because he is. Do you hear what I said there? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please God. Now, he said, he that cometh to him must believe what? No, not that he's somebody that gives result. He's not that he's somebody that blesses. No, you must believe that he is. That's the first thing. Your belief system must believe that he is, not worse. Because Jesus is never worse. Jesus is. You are the one defining worse by timing. So he gave you the platform and said, Jesus is what is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus remains same. You can be changing, but he's the unchanging changer. He keeps not changing, but you're changing. Your atmosphere will change, trend will change, fashion will change, but Jesus will never change. The same Jesus from the beginning, the Bible says, he is the one that remains now as we speak. He will be the one that will be there forever. When you get to heaven, it is Jesus that you will see. You will see the master sitting on the throne. He's called the Lamb of the Lord that take away the sins of the world. He is the master. He's the creator. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's why he's called Jesus. He's the mighty I am. That's the one you will see. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And he sits on the throne. So when you come to him, you must believe that he is. Believers believe that he is. Even before you hear the result, he said, then he's a rewarder of them who diligently, not casually. He talks about he is before a rewarder. If you go for a rewarder, you will miss he is. Because sometimes you may not see reward, but he remains he is. 
what are you here? Because it will always be his, even if there's no reward. So we don't chase reward, we chase him. If you keep chasing him, even if there's no reward, he remains who he is. Ah, one day my heart was troubled after I was looking forward to something and I started hearing some very terrible news. My heart almost broke. But when I looked and I said, he is, he remains the same. Now, because it did not happen to me, does not change him. Because you did not get it, does not change Jesus. Jesus remains the same. Whether you get it or not, he is Christ. Funny enough, the day, I, the day it came to my understanding that the things that we are all chasing or the things that we are all looking for are nothing when it comes to heaven. Nothing. It's nothing to him. When I started noticing that thing, you know what? If you don't get it, it doesn't move God. Because ultimately, the counsel of God must come to pass. Oh, when I knew that God's counsel can come to pass, that thing changed my life. You know what? God can choose and by his counsel can just collapse the whole nation called Nigeria. Then he can raise another new nation. He, does, he won't take anything to call it to come forth. Do you know it won't take him anything? Do you know that one time he looked at them and said, ah, if you people will not praise me, I will speak to these stones right now. And stones will rise up. If you think he's joking, check Ezekiel chapter 47. Do you know when he looked at them, is it 37 or 47? He looked at them and said, hey, can these dry bones live? Ah, Ezekiel said, that no, I saw God. He says, professor, you will see what I can do. I can look at a nation and make everybody dry bones. And I can look at dry bones and pick people up immediately. That's why when you become something, you became something because God made you something. Yeah. Did you understand what I'm saying? That's why I say, hey, we are all saved by grace. So any man should not boast. You should not even think of boasting at all that you are saved. That you are even walking on earth is by favor and by faith. That the Lord loves you. Oh, what am I saying? Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. He said, you are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. He said, but it's not you that live it. He said, Christ, that live it in you. He said, this life that you are living, <laughs> this, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. All he has to do is withdraw. You're gone, sir. Your breath is in your nostril. All he has to do is withdraw. You are gone, sir. So all this, your dress up, all this, you're looking good is only by grace and by mercy. That's why I said, it's not he that will it or he that run it. It is God that showed mercy. At a point, he said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. And I will do what? I will show compassion upon whom I will show compassion. That's why we're not competing with people because they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. God can choose to raise this one. God can choose to pull a king and put it down and raise a non entity. Nobody that has never seen anything and God will raise him out of the dunghill and out of the dust and he will place him among the princes of his people. When he's sitting there people will be wondering, what is his lineage? Where did he come from? It's not about lineage, it is God. God is his lineage. He said I will be your exceeding great reward. Listen, when God is rewarding you you don't have access to people's inheritance. God is your inheritance. Church, are you here? Oh, I said God is your inheritance. Are you here? So you must believe that he is first before a rewarder some of us have mixed it up so you check for reward without checking the rewarder and that is why babies when they lose things they get angry with god because they don't know who he is he doesn't take god anything to recreate things you know what he told moses say moses come stay away let me kill all of them i will through you make a new nation Right there. God has already conceptualized a new nation through Moses. Why they are still thinking about who did this? Who ate onion? Who? Mm, Moses, move, 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 move. <laughs> oh, Lord, you are. He is so that you can exist. The only thing that gives us guarantee that we exist is because he is. Church, I want to remind you every time when things don't go your way, remind yourself, he is. You might even be crying doing it. Oh Lord, he is. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. He may be in tears, he is. Lord, you will never change. You remain the same. You remain the same. You just be, you see, in your tears, in your pain, you just be saying, Lord, you are, you are, you are. Yeah, you are singing the song down. That just go, hey, yeah, nah, nah. sing, sing it again. Eh? 
You are, 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 mighty God, you are. Yes, say it. You are, 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 you are. Mighty God, can you take it one more time? Take it one more time. You are, you are, you are. You are, you are. You, are. you never change, oh God. You are, you are, you are. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Can you sing it one time by faith? You are, you are, you are, you are. You are. Can we do it one more time? I just love it. You are, you are, you are, you are. You never change, oh God. You never change. You are, you are, you are. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Two more times, two more times. Hey, you are, you are, you are. Mighty God, Lord, we declare your existence right here. Lord, we declare that you are, no, you were. Lord, you exist now and forever. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, if you did it to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you can do it to Emmanuel. You can do it to Johnson. You can do it to Kinsley. You can do it to Bob. If you did it, oh God, in the Acts of Apostle, then you can do it to Victor. You can do it to Robert. If you did it, oh God, to Ruth. If you did it to Esther, Lord, you can separate and do it to Precious. Even in this generation, you can do it to Blessing. Lord, if you did it, oh God, if you did it, oh God, to Jabesh. And Jabesh said, enlarge my coast, oh Oh God and the Bible says that the Lord brought forth honor to him if you did it then Lord you can do it to Wally you can do it to Debbie you can do it to Clegg you can do it oh God the same yesterday the same today the same forever the power has never diminished the power has never reduced it's the same power you can't even measure that power it's unlimited power it's unlimited power it's unlimited power you can't measure it the power is from infinity to infinity you can't hold the power hey, you are 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 You are, 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 you you are, you you are, 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 you Oh, say one more time. Say faith prophets. Faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. I said it there. For unto us was the gospel preached and as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Your hearing it will only profit under improper mixing of faith. And that's the reason why I always tell people, be careful what you hear and how you hear. Because what you hear and how you hear will determine the mixing of your faith. 
You can hear and hear wrongly. That's why scripture says, let him that has hear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. In another prayer place, he said, Lord, give us a seeing eye and an hearing here. Because you may have hear and not hear. Church, are you here? So you must have the understanding that to hear and to hear well is proper. To hear well is proper. To hear well is proper. You must learn to hear accurately so that you can speak accurately. Listen, the mixing of faith is what causes profitability. Faith profits. Now, some people have, have faith, but it doesn't profit them. Scripture says because they do not know how to mix. Mixing is a key strategy or a key technology in expressing faith so that you don't trust in the wisdom of men but in the power of the Lord. Now people have put their faith in the wisdom of men because of what they heard and they ran with it and they ended up with a shipwreck of their faith. But you must trust in the gospel. It's the gospel that guarantees a proper total wholeness of delivery of faith. Church, are you here? Faith what? Prophets. If you want to profit by faith, you must learn the principle of mixing. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. A workman that knows how to defy, divide the word of truth rightly, you will never be ashamed. Now, your proper division is what takes shame away. If you don't divide well, or God, you will go into division. You must learn how to divide the word properly, rightly, so that you do not enter into chaos. People have run with not what God said, but what they think God said. Church, do you hear what I said? So you must learn the principle of mixing by faith. That's why scripture make it very clear. He said, hey, you must walk with the proceeding word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. There's something called the proceeding word. It's the word that God gives at that time for that situation. Not every logos is meant for you at that time. So you must learn to know what profits you. Because the Lord can give you a word and that word is supposed to be obeyed to come into manifestation. Yeah. God will never move beyond your obedience. It's your obedience that guarantees the manifestation of the word. If the word is not in an obedient format, you cannot eat the good of the land. He said you will be, you'll be able to eat the good of the land if you are willing and obedient. Ah! Man, if you learn the principle of obedience, you'll be able to express and manifest the power in the word of God. Was it Archbishop Itawosta that was saying it? He said one time in his life, one time in his life, Amrobas came to his house. And while Amrobas came to his house, he said he heard the Holy Spirit say, he said, go and resist them. Yes, there's a word that stirs you up to do that. Because the Bible says we resist the devil steadfastly by faith. And he went and he confronted them and resisted them. And they all ran away. He said, another time, Amrobas came again. He said he heard the Holy Spirit say, run. He could have said, no, Lord. The righteous as bold as a lion. Oh, guy, if you have mixed that, you are all oh, men most miserable. You, because you would have mixed it wrongly. <laughs> because at that time, the season of the word says run. It is the obedience of the word that manifests your faith. Church, are you here? Listen, anytime we say he said it, did he really say it? Because you can't keep telling us he said it if he didn't say it. He said, I believe. What did you believe? Did you believe what you think he said or he said? Then you believed it. Because you can't speak before believing. He said, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. He said, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You cannot be confessing when the heart has not believed. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If your mouth is speaking without the heart, there's no alignment. If there's no alignment, there's chaos coming your way. Church, are you here? I want you to hear me clearly because you see the shipwreck of faith has happened a lot to Christians. So people are angry. And that's why Jesus was praying for Peter. He said, let me pray for you so that your faith will not fail. Because there will come a time people's faith will fail. You know why? Because they've trusted in the wisdom of men. You can't put your faith on people's testimony. Oh my God, you didn't hear what I said there. Yeah. You can't put your faith on people's testimony because when they heard that testimony was in the middle of the night and God gave them a running word and they ran with that word and the testimony happened. Now you are trying to enter that testimony without the running word. You will have a shipwreck of faith because you must hear Jesus say, come. He say, master, are you the one walking on the water? I'm the one. He said, beat me. He said, come. He said, oh, the master has spoken. He walked on water based on come. 
because he word came out. Jesus said, come. Oh, my Lord. When Jesus said, come, he told Peter, come. I know some of you have preached this message before. And what you said was, when he told Peter, come, everybody should have jumped on the water. You jump. <laughs> he didn't tell everybody, come. Did you hear what I said there? He told Jesus, come. And let me tell you, Jesus does not talk anyhow. He doesn't talk loosely. Because when he also went to the tomb of Lazarus, he called, Lazarus, come forth. The Lazarus he spoke to came. Why didn't the other Lazarus that died to, 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 why did that say, I, I'm here? No, no, no. <laughs> the angel said, keep quiet. <laughs> you are not the Lazarus <laughs> the word went for. He said, he sent forth his word and it does not return unto him void. He goes forth, the word goes forth to go and fetch what the word has been sent to do. That's why nobody can take your word. Do you understand? If your word had been sent to you, listen, if your word had been sent to you, even if you go to China, your word will find you in China. Even if you go to the cave of Hadulam, your word will find you in Hadulam. Even if you go, if you are suffering in a jungle, your word will come. Your word will separate all the chaps and all the wits. And it will come in, separate all the area boys. He will enter while you are sleeping on the backside of a river or, or canal. He will find you that the word will lift you up. Yes, sir. That's what the word does. He will find you. Oh man, when your word has your name on it, nothing can stop it. That's why you, all you need is a word. Tell somebody all you need is a word. All this competition can help you. All this contention can help you. All this trying to become people can help you. All you need is a word from God. When you have a word from God, people will try to be like you. You will not be looking to be like people. You will be a trend setter. You will be the one setting up trends. A pace setter. That's who you are. Church, are you here? Faith what? Prophets. You must experience the profitability of faith. People are not experiencing profit. It gets me angry. When I see people say, I'm a Christian. I say, since when? 20 years. I can't see profit on you, sir. They should return you to heaven. You know, some people, you are not giving dividends to God. Kingdom should be pulling some of us out. Kingdom should say, hey, retired. Retired. They should be paying you some of you pension. Heavenly pension. What you should be getting is pension. There should be your PFA in heaven. That should be sorting you out. But come up. You are not required on earth, sir. You are a wasted, you are a wasted resource. You are a liability, sir. According to kingdom statement, financial statement, you are costing us more money than, oh my God, we are spending too much on you, sir. Oh, do you know we are spending too much? The blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the angels of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the name of Jesus. All this weapon that we are pouring on earth, you are wasting, you are wasting. Please come up, come up. Like Lazarus that was eating uh, uh, the crumb that fell from the rich man stable. When he got to a point, do you know the people that came to pick him up? Angels. When he died, it was angels. The resources that he should be using was using him. I get what I'm saying. You must get to a point. The resources he's supposed to be using. Because the Bible said the angels of the Lord that they around 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 that fear the Lord. He said, are they not ministers toward the heirs of salvation? You are supposed to be releasing angels from one angle to another. He said, the angels of the Lord are akin to the commandment of the Lord. You are supposed to say, angels, go here, go here. It was when they when he died, that angels came to pick him. Angels said, you are a wasted resources. Lazarus, with everything God has done, you are here. Rich man's house. Trusting men. Knowing, knowing that the arms of men will fail. Arms of men will fail. Some of us that trusted uncle in those days, the uncle, have, all of them have died. Some of us that were looking forward to one uncle, I had planned certain uncles that if I do this, this uncle, even some of you have created a budget on uncles. He said, when uncle, hey, you know when you have a particular target, yeah? Let's say three million, or maybe you want to go on school or something. You just plan it with uncles. He said, this uncle will drop 250. This one will drop 300. You know, you just put the uncle. Uncle will not even know you're arranging them. I get what I'm saying? Then you go. Then when they're praying, you go by faith. <laughs> That's what you always tell us. He said, you go by faith. Then you start using prayers. You start using this kind of prayer because I've done it before. You are mixing wrongly. He said, the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Whatever we turn, it will turn. It will turn. Oh, Lord, I speak to Uncle John. Your heart is in the hand of God. You will turn today. As I come to meet you, then you the scripture. As I come, I come as Esther. And I come, I come as Esther. As many people that saw Esther, he found favor. As I come, but my uncle, listen, as you come, nothing will be seen. Because you sent yourself, God didn't send you. Woo! God didn't send you. But listen, do you know what I, I noticed? I said, but if God calls you, 
everybody will be excited to help you. Because at that time, helping you makes them blessed. You know, let, let, let me tell you something, guys. Get to a point where you start getting tired of looking for help. Trust, start trusting God for help to be looking for you. It's a new thing. Hello? Yeah. Is that David? Yeah, yeah, that's David. They say you are looking for. How did you know? <laughs> Woo! There's a category of people I'm going to pray for when, I, when we do the anointing. It's called, it's called, it's called, it's called the oil of favor. Where helps look for you. You will have a need in your heart. You've not conceptualized it yet. But help will be saying, you are, are you planning to do something? No, I've not thought about it yet. No, no, when you're true, please let us know. Deposit of helpers. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will have what I call bank of helpers. Bank. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus for somebody. You will have what they call bank. Bank of helpers. That is, that is you will have a bank full of helpers. When your children are going to school, Helper will arise. Oh, when they are planning to travel, helpers will arise. When they are trying to go to university, helper will arise. You will get to some place and say, oh, are you the son? Are you the son of... Don't worry. It's done. Did you hear what I just said there? No, some of you didn't pick what I just said now. Do you know if the son of Pastor Adeboe, let's say I'm working in a company and the son comes in and I don't know it's the son and the son is, maybe needs a particular help. Then that says, oh, I am Joshua Adeboe. You know, the first thing you will normally ask, anybody will say, oh, Adeboe, which Adeboe is this? He say, oh, um, redeem. <sighs> Immediately, what do you want to do? You want to see how you can help. Is that true? Yes. Talk to me, is that true? Yes. Okay. Now, let me tell you how you are preaching the spirit. That's the son of a human. Now, let me not tell you how you're in the spirit. Every time you also appear in anywhere, hmm? in the spirit, they're asking questions. Who are you? Um, um, son of Jesus. Oh, son of Jesus? Which, which Jesus? Because we have Jesus Brazil, Jesus Portugal. Jesus, which Jesus is yours? Jesus the Christus. Christus. Oh, the anointed, the anointing, <laughs> the anointed one and his anointing. Oh, is that the one you are the son? He said, yes. Ah then all angels will begin to work to make sure that all things work together for your good. So your identity as a son commands help. So anywhere you are, if you identify yourself as the son of God, automatically it triggers help. Because a message has gone forth that anywhere his sons are, help must come. I have been younger, I have been old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Or his what? Or his seed. Do what? I have never seen. You know why you've not seen it? Do you know why you've not seen it? Because every time the righteous appears, help. Are you guys understand what I'm saying? You know the one I love most? is the one they call the very present help. As you need it, you have it. You know there are helps and there are help. Yes. There are help that you are waiting for. This one is that as you get there, the help is there. I pray in the name of Jesus for somebody here. Come on, I always experience it very well. I pray for what I call a very present help. A very present hell anointing to rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Oh, you guys are not here. Can I get a better amen? A very present help. A very present help. The moment you are thinking it is arriving. 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 In the name of Jesus. Very present. That's what scripture says. Very present. It means as the trouble arrives, help comes. Funny enough, your help is like an email with an attachment. As the trouble comes, find attach the help. Faith speaks. First Timothy 4.15, faith speaks. Sorry, faith prophets. Meditate upon these things. First, First Peter 4.15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear. 
your profiting as a Christian will begin to appear. All this, I'm serving God, serving God. They're not seeing results. What was that? I'm serving the Lord, serving the Lord. Have you not seen people ask you, which God are you even serving? Oh my God. I love the way, I love the way Elijah put it. Elijah said, listen, 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 listen. We are, we are competing too much. We are competing too much. Let us stop this argument. Let us determine today, today, today. Let there be a clear distinction between the God, you God that you serve, and our own God. There will be no argument. If we do this competition, if your God brings fire, I will go. I will serve your God. But if my God brings the fire, you serve my God. And the competition was set up. Simple. You must get to a point in your Christian life that there must be distinction. Listen, what proves that you are a true believer is your distinction. Because what worries me is that you say you are a city set upon the hill and you are looking like a village. You are looking like someone that has been beaten out. I mean, you are a city set upon the hill. Do you know how cities look like? Cities carry power. They carry government. City carry rulership. You cannot be behave like a village. You know there's a difference between a village and a city. God didn't say you are a village set upon the hill. You can't even put a village on the hill. I, I don't even know how to put that. He said, he said you are a light of the world. He said, how can you light a candle? and put it under the bushel. It means you light a candle, then you now try to put it under your chair. He said, it's not normal. You know why? It means you can't really hide light. You are not light. This little light of mine. And you are singing it. That's the problem. Because your light is little. Because I don't know why you came about the little light in the first place. Because in reality, there's nothing called little light. Church, you didn't hear what I said? Your light is as bright as darkness that arrives. There's nothing called little light. The, the small light that you see, if I switch off this, if I switch everywhere now, and I put on just the, the phone light, and I put it on, you will see how massive it will show. Why? The bigger your darkness, the bigger your light. Yes, sir. That's why you must look for darkness everywhere so that your light can shine. Darkness, when darkness comes, your light will come into manifestation. You, when you come, listen, you know the reason why most of our lights are not showing so much in Lagos is because we are not being confronted by evil spirit on a regular basis. <laughs> do, you know, do you know if all of us go now, if all of us go to all those areas of Oshobo and, and, and some dangerous area in Benin, and let's say we want to go and do evangelism there, you understand what I'm saying? Do you know that if we arrive there that night, that night, that night, sis, you just see that our bed will just begin to rise. As our bed begins to rise, you will see, you will see us begin to, you will see power, you will see grace. You'll be wondering, man, I didn't know I was like this. Oh, hey, oh God, you didn't see fire. All this while you have been dealing with local government devils. I get what I'm saying? Now you just made principality. Principality came your way. I get what I'm saying? Uh, rulers of darkness <laughs> came through your own zone. Are you getting me? Oh, listen, they, they, they are not everywhere. Principality is not everywhere. Do you hear what I said? Ruler of darkness is not everywhere. Uh -huh. They put them in division. So the one we have here may be counselor devil. I get what I'm saying? In the area. So he only feeds the local government. They will not be sent into the local government of the devil, the local government governor of their, of, their, of, their, <laughs> of their kingdom. They will not be giving them information if you are not troubling anybody. I get what I'm saying? You say, no, 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 he's another, he's another. You know when you do, when you do five minutes there, uh, uh, you sleep, he's another, he's another. Trouble, I go, trouble. He's, he's okay, he's okay. But the day you begin to nata maneto zipalia ah, first day, then you begin to look for people. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. Then people are getting saved. Ah, then they will report. Then they will send message to the local go uh, local government chairman. He say, hey, there's a guy who, uh -huh, on our own street. He's causing issue. Ah, local government will just come. What, what's going on here? What's happening? Who is he? Then all of a sudden, you begin to cause fire. The fire begins to catch people. You just be, everybody's getting a flame. Everybody's catching fire. Then all of a sudden, the local government man will just send message to who? To a principality. Head office. He said, hey, something has gone wrong. He said, what? He said, there is one guy, just one, in Suleri. What he's doing? If we don't stop it, something will go wrong. From that place, principalities are smarter than the local government ones. I get me? So they will come with with devices. All of a sudden, you just see your wife from nowhere. You are going to church. Your wife just says, ah, why are you wearing blue? He said, but this is the blue I always wear before. He said, no, no, this place is not good. Ah, principality is setting up things. I get what I'm saying. So if you're a wise man, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're a wise man, you're a wise man. We, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. So you know, you know what's going on. You say, oh, oh, you don't like this blue. 
Oh, okay, okay. Give me any blue you want. The moment you do that, ah, principally say, oh, this guy, this guy is bad. This guy is bad. This guy is bad. This guy is bad. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we... So they'll be looking for you, anything that concerns you to provoke you. Listen, the devil is not interested in your car. The devil is not interested in your dress. He's not interested in your health. He's just interested in something to break you. That's all. If he can't break you with one, he will leave it. Have you noticed? If the devil is giving you serious stress on your car and you don't bother, maybe you, you woke up one morning and you want to drive. Ah, the tire is down. You want to drive. Oh, boat. <laughs> You'll be shocked. By the time you're back, someone just say, I saw your flat tire and I said, you change it. You didn't bother. Anytime you don't get bothered, the devil doesn't get bothered. It's what you get bothered about that the devil is looking. So he's watching what troubles you so that he can trouble you the more. So some of you, some of you, those things that always trouble you, the devil is looking for you to make you mad. So you don't find, and some of your wives and husbands, may the Lord help you. You are, you, are, you are the devil's ally. The devil gives you thoughts. Then you use it, you won't know. He's just pumping things into your heart. You will now provoke your wife. Can you imagine after praying for 30 days, fasting, and as you are coming out of the fasting, the first thing your wife will look at you, is say, ah, ekbeleo, prayer. <laughs> just imagine that word. No, just imagine that word coming to you. And some of you, you will not be smart. You will say, <laughs> you say, what? <laughs> you will say, what is that? What is that? What's wrong? You say, hey, I told you, then, then, then the devil will give her now. I told you you just came out from prayer. Do you know that day, all the anointing you brought? Oh, church, Jesus went to pray for 40 days and 40 nights. And on the last day when he came out, the Bible said, and he was on guard. And the first person that met him was Satan. He said, ah, bros, I will be able. I command these stones to break. Now, he came immediately at the point of his temptation, at the point of his need. Because most times the devil will hit you at the point of your need. But anytime you don't look at your need, but you seek Jesus, anytime you seek Jesus and don't look at your need, he will leave that temptation and look for another one. Do you see he was shifting temptation? But Jesus was answering for every temptation. It means that he was not really interested whether Jesus eat food or not. He was not really interested whether Jesus go to the mountain or not. He was just trying to break his communion with God. But when Jesus finished with him, the Bible said, and the Satan left him for a while. Church, are you here? Ah, tell somebody I've been battling wrong stuff. I've been battling wrong stuff. Sometimes hit yourself and say, Ah, Emmanuel, you have been battling wrong stuff. Listen, what you are calling battle is not the battle. Come on, the devil is old. But boy, you're old. The devil is very old. You can't be smarter than the devil. Who told you that? You can't. That's why we don't operate with our own wisdom. You have to operate with the wisdom from above. Because listen, the devil, let me, why you have to pray the wisdom from above is this. The devil does not know how God operates. Yes, sir. Even God likes to play with him. <laughs> I've noticed all scripture. God likes playing with him. Uh, Satan, where have you been? Ah, Dad, I've been moving to and fro. Just looking for people to confuse and kill. I've been moving. You know I mean? <laughs> I steal, I kill, and I destroy. I move everywhere. I've been to Sulere. I've just been moving around, sir. He said, hey, have you considered my servant Job. Ah. We Job. No, the one in the east. That powerful boy. Lord, leave that thing. Is it not because of the shield you put around him? Is that not why he's, he's feeling good? He has been covered now. There's nothing we can do about him. There's a shield over his family. There's a shield over his property. There's a shield over his life. Because those are the three dimensions of a human's life that the enemy comes for. Your property, your family, your life. Your life talks about your health. Your property talks about your wealth. Your family talks about the, the thing you connect with. So the enemy will always hit you from those three angles. You will notice if he wants to hit you, he can hit your property. All of a sudden, you just discover that things are falling apart. Then he can hit your family. All of a sudden, things are falling apart. Where he's coming for is actually your life. Because the moment he ends up in your life, then one day you will just hear a statement, curse God and die. That is suicide spirit. Church, do you understand the system he uses? Aha. Uh -huh. So when he said that thing, God just said, he said, he said, okay, okay, okay. Job, Job, Job. Um, um, Satan. Okay, no problem. I've removed the shield, but don't touch his life. Okay? He said, say thank you. Do you know? Do you know? God just removed the shield. Some of you don't know what you are enjoying. Do you know shield that God just removed for a few minutes? 
few minutes, God removed the shield. The devil took, took, tore everything apart. All of a sudden, one brought news. Ah, your children are dead. One brought news. Ah, your property, your business is gone. They were bringing bad news. Bad news. Just because they removed shield. And when he got to his wife, his wife looked at him, Job, what else do you want to look for? Just cause God and die. There's nothing. Cause God and die. Ah, Job got to a point. Job said, ah, I've lost it. Job did not know there was a contest going over his life. <laughs> God was boasting. God was boasting about Job. May the Lord boast about us. Did you hear the prayer? I said, may the Lord boast about us. Now, when the Lord starts boasting about you and things start happening, please don't run away. May the Lord boast about you. Your faith will not fail as the Lord boasts about you. Do you understand? All of a sudden, he heard. He heard. The wife told him, curse God. Curse. And let's go. Cause God and let's go. Job got to a point and he said, listen, even if he slay me. So Job went from, it's not the devil that can kill me. Let me hand myself over to God. Lord, if you slay me, I will not even still stop to worship and serve you. You slay me. The devil is too small to kill. You slay me. You see, when you hand over your debt to God, you have canceled out the devil. You are only afraid of death because you think it's the devil that is bringing it. Funny enough, the person that brought death is God. The person that manufactured death is God. The devil does not understand death. Church, are you here? That's why when the devil must have been captured, death will be the last one to take away. He says the last enemy God is taking. Now, he doesn't understand. So it's God that brought death because God told Adam and Eve, he said, if you eat of this tree, what will happen? You will die. So the first way you hear death is God. So the devil does not know. So when all of you, you are always giving credit to the devil for killing. Oh, my life is not in the hand of the devil. Please, can you make that confession? My life. No, make that confession by faith again. My life is not in the hand of the devil. Let me say one more thing, then we're going to the anointing. Or oh, maybe I won't, just, I won't just run it. Let me just drop it. I said faith, prophet. I mentioned, I said faith sees. And it's also blind. I said it the other time. Second Corinthians 4, 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Faith speaks. Romans 4, 17. Faith speaks. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believe God, who gives life to the dead and call those things which do exist as though they did. Faith aligns with present truth. I said it, and not fact. Jesus is the truth. The fact may be right, but it's not an evidence. The only evidence is Jesus. Do you understand? So faith aligns with truth and not fact. Yes, it is a fact. They've seen the report. They've done the scan. They've seen the report. But that's not the truth. We stay with truth, not the fact. There's nothing wrong with the fact, but the truth is our reality. The truth only becomes your reality because you are not looking at the things that are seen. Anytime you look at the things that are seen, that's fact. The things that are not seen is the truth. Now, the truth always bet the reality. The fact doesn't. Because everything that you see that are seen are better by the things that are unseen. Yeah. So why will you not, not be getting courage from the things that are unseen? You are spending strength on the things that are seen. The things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen are what? Are eternal. That's why we do not walk by sight. But we walk by what? By faith. What is faith? Faith is the what? The substance of things what? Hope for. And what? The evidence of what? Things not seen. So we hold evidence but things that are not seen. So Jesus is the truth. Bible said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, then you will know the truth. What will happen? You will be set free. So if you hold the truth and not the fact, you'll be set free from the fact. Just hold the truth for a while. The truth will set you free from facts. A lot of you hold on to facts. Facts, sincerely, will cause a major chaos in your life. But if you hold truth, truth will deliver you from facts. Do you hear what I said? 
He said, who shall believe the report of our God? Now, there's something, the report of our God. There are several reports that are flying. Whose report do you believe? Oh, that's a good song by Ron Canole. He said, whose report shall you believe? He said, we shall believe the report of our God. What does the report say? The report says what? I am what? I am healed. I am free. I am Oh, that's the report that we believe. Whose report? Ask your neighbor, whose report would you believe? No, no, ask the person one more time. Whose report would you believe? As we go into this anointing service, tell the person, whose report would you believe? Tell the person, as we go into this anointing service, whose report would you believe? Tell the person, I will believe the report of our God. His report says, I am free. His report says, I am saved. His report says, I am healed. That's what the report of the Lord says. Who shall believe the report of our God? There's a report of our God. There's a report of our God. I believe his report. I don't believe the report of the devils. I don't believe the report, natural report. I believe his report. He said, trust in the Lord and do not lean on your own understanding. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. We trust in the Lord with all our heart. We trust in the Lord with all our strength. We trust in the Lord with all our might. Why do we trust him? We trust him because we know he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Now let's enter into the anointing proper. There are three categories I want to jump into. The first one, the first category is anointing those who feel or who are sick in their body. That's number one. If there's any kind of sickness that you have in your body that you are managing or you have been trying to maintain and it has been there for years or an ailment, this is an opportunity to trust God for what will happen. James chapter 5, verse 13, 14, and 15, I think. He said, is anyone among you here that is in trouble? He said, let them pray. Is anybody in trouble here? The instruction is pray. If you're in trouble, he said, let them pray. He said, is anyone happy? What did he say you do? Let them sing songs of praise. Now, see 14, my focus. Is anyone among you sick? He said, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with what? With oil. In what? In the name of the Lord. Church, I always remind you, what is the name of the Lord? The name of the Lord is Jesus. The name of the Lord is Jesus. Because the Bible said he had been given a name above every other name. Okay? All right. For some of you that always say, oh, Elohim, Eli, Elihon, uh, El Gibor, no problem. You, you love it, no problem. But in the scripture, in the New Testament, the name of the Lord is Jesus. That's why scripture said, we pray in the name of the Father, not the names. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. That's the name that is recognized in the heavens. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the name that devils bow down to. Do you know, devils even said, he said, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know. Who are you guys? That means there are certain names that they have. They have record of names. They have record of names. They have record of names. So if you happen to visit Babalao or visit devils, just check them and say, please, do you have files? Just ask them and say, do you have my name there? You know, just to, just to verify whether you are in the name, <laughs> in the book. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so he said, he said, he said, he said, and the prayer offered, listen, so it's not the anointing oil, it is the prayer of faith. He said, and the prayer offered, please go to the next verse. Uh -huh. And what? And the prayer, the prayer of what? And the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. So do you see that he's saving the sick, not just healing. He's giving the sick wholeness. What that means is that you'll be healed and be whole. Ah, there's a difference between healing and wholeness. You can be healed and not be whole. You'll be healed and whole. That means that that thing will not come back again. No, the kind of prayer we're going to anoint you on is that that thing you've been carrying, you will not fall into it again. In the name of Jesus. That's the first set of people. The second set of people, because of time, is called, is called, is called the oil. So the first one is oil to heal the sick and to save the sick. The other one is oil to break yokes. Oil to break yokes. Oil to break yokes. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, 
And he said, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be what? Shall be what? Destroyed because of what? Because of the anointing. Now there's something I'm trusting God for tonight as we pray. I want, to, I want to deal with stubborn situations. So I'm trusting God that for anything that has been hanging too long, anything that has stayed too long and refused to move, strongholds, I'm trusting God that as the anointing will hit you, that yoke will be broken. And I'm something I want to also trust God for. If there's patterns, maybe there are certain things that you have seen happening along certain things along your life. And they're becoming patterns that go in annual, that go in monthly. And you are not comfortable with them. As we begin to pray, I see that particular you're broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Or you are seeing something that is looking as if it's almost happening to your children. You've seen it happen to certain people within the family and you're seeing that thing crossing and you're seeing it. I'm trusting God that as the anointing comes, it's going to break yokes in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, because this particular thing is not always happening, maybe to your cousins or to your aunties, and you're thinking it will not happen to you. I'm saying by this anointing, it will cause an acceleration. It doesn't need, listen, people don't need to have the, the same age, certain people, those things are happening. It doesn't need to be your own age. Now, God can cause a speed to your own. I get what I'm saying. So by the anointing, he said he will lift the burden of the Assyrians and he will break their yokes. Now, there's a version I love. I love a particular version. That's the version I'm trusting God for, for somebody here. I'm trusting God for this version. I'm trusting God for this version. In, in Amplified Version Classified, and it said, it shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and is yoke from your neck. You know how it's going to happen. He said, the yoke shall be destroyed because of fatness. You'll be too large for the yoke. God will so increase you, it will break the yoke. Listen, some of you, your promotion will break the yoke. It's a promotion. So for the yoke to be broken is that God will lift you up. Yes. You are not here. You are not here. I said something will happen. Let's say, for example, they've never experienced a level of prosperity in your family. Listen, the yoke, listen, God will fatten you in such a way that the grace and favor that will come will just break that yoke over that family. Let me give another example. Let's say they've never given birth. People don't give birth in that house. Let's, this is what's going to happen. You will not have just one child. You will have a triplet. Because, because you see, the yoke, there needs to be a fattening. It will just shatter the yokes. The yoke will shatter. And let me tell you, some of you, the kind of salary you've never seen before in your life, you know those type, type of salary that will just break, it will break your head. You just, it, it, there'll be a fattening that will destroy, because they are Syrian, there's a yoke. So you need to get fattened the next time. It will break. He said that yoke cannot hold that person's name. That, that yoke can't hold you because you are getting bigger than your trouble. Oh my God. I pray for somebody here, you get bigger than your trouble. No, I'm telling you, I said you get bigger than your trouble. Do you know, do you know, play something very strong for me. Do you know, do you know that when we are flying, do you know when we, when we, when we take and we're flying uh, in an aeroplane, do you notice this, some of you guys, when you see people, let's imagine the people that you're seeing on the ground, when you are meeting them, they look big. Some of them will look tall. But the moment you take a flight and you begin to, to begin to take taxi and you begin to climb, as you are climbing, people get smaller. As you're climbing, then all of a sudden, not that people get smaller, nations will get smaller. Then all of a sudden, countries will get smaller. Because one time I was flying and I went through France and they say, ah, that's France. They say, ah, is that France? That's the whole of France. And I went through England, that's the whole of England. And I, so as I was flying, the higher I go, the smaller. I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll be bigger than your trouble. Oh, I said you'll be bigger than your trouble. Listen, your neck will so grow fat that your trouble will not be able to contain it. You'll be bigger than your trouble in Jesus' name. In the next few days, you will get a news that will cause your trouble to quake. Oh, you're not here. I said you will get a news that will cause your trouble to quake. In the name of Jesus. I said you will be bigger than your trouble. You'll be taller than your trouble. In the name of Jesus. Then the other oil, because of time, the other oil that we'll be praying 
and trusting God for is the oil, I love this one, is the oil of gladness. Now, 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 let me tell you what that does. In Psalm 45 verse 7, the Bible says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity. He said, Therefore, the God, the, thy, therefore God thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Anytime you hear the oil of gladness, what it fights is the spirit of heaviness and depression. So if you have always been, you've never had a source of joy, rejoice. For he will turn your mourning into dancing. There's somebody here. He will turn your mourning into dancing. Listen, this anointing will hit you and the spirit of joy will come alive in the inside of you in the name of Jesus. Look at what he said here. I'm so excited. Look at what he said here. He said in Psalm 30, 11 to 12, amplified, classified. He said, you have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. To that hand, my tongue and my heart and everything glorious within me may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh Lord, I will give thanks to you forever. Church, I want you to get ready and get yourself brace up because weeping may endure for a night, but the anointing that will hit you will begin to stir up joy. Oh, everybody say joy. joy. Tell somebody, say my morning has come. My morning has come. He said, your joy will come in the morning. Tell somebody, say, my morning has come in the name of Jesus. The anointing will hit some of us. You will end your night. Oh, come on. I speak to a end of a night today. I end a night today. There's somebody here. I end your night today. I end that night. That night that you have been experiencing, I end that night today. Give me my mic, please. Where's the mic? I end that night. So every night that you have stayed, you've been crying. You see, crying is night, but joy is in the morning. I prophesied to somebody here. I said, your morning has come in the name of Jesus. I said, your morning has come in the name of Jesus. I said, your morning has come in the name of Jesus. I said, your morning has come in the name of Jesus. Then the final oil that we're going to that the final oil that we're going to pray through is called is called the oil of favor. Psalm eighty four verse eleven. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing. Give me that scripture. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Favor will become my shield. By this oil, favor will become your shield. By this anointing. I love this version. This version says, He said, For you bless the righteous, ESV, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. <laughs> New American Bible says, For you bless the righteous person. You surround him with favor as with a shield. In Isaiah chapter 50, 58 verse 11, this is for somebody here. He said, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and it will strengthen your frame. This is what I like. You will be like a well-watered garden. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring of water. Your waters will not fail. Oh, oh come on, church. I know you say your waters will not fail. You will be like a well-watered garden. A well-watered garden, the grass is green. Evergreen. Look, look, you see beautiful green grass. That's how you're going to be looking now. What that means like this, what it means is this, in your old age, you'll be bearing fruit. Oh, you're not here, you're not here. Only few people are here. I said, in your old age, you will bear fruit. As you are growing older, you're getting younger. Do you know what Caleb said? Caleb said, even though I'm 80, but the feeling I'm having, I'm having the feeling of a 40-year-old. I've been praying that prayer. I said, Lord, now that I'm 50, I want to be feeling like 25. Now, so I'm, I'm, I'm building it. So if you're, if you're 30 here, tell yourself, I want to be feeling like 15. 
You know, you, you, you know, just just divide it by two. Divide by two. Oh, you are not here. Church. You are looking at me. I said, divide your own by two. You are looking at my own. <laughs> the strength you will have what they call the strength of an ox. He said, the Lord will exalt my own like the horn of an ox. He said, would exalt my own. He will exalt. I said, your own shall be exalted. I said, your own shall be exalted. Oh, tonight, as the anointing comes on you, I said, your own shall be exalted. In the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, your bones will be getting stronger. All of a sudden, your bones will be getting stronger. All of a sudden, your heart will be strong. All of a sudden, your right hand will be strong. All of a sudden, your wisdom will come alive. All of a sudden, your favor will come alive. Pray the Holy Ghost for one minute. I don't, I don't want to stay more than the time. Now, can I have some of the ministers just, just take the oil, ministers? Now, when they bring the oil to you, please, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. For the people who are sick in their body, those are the people I'm going to pray for first. So what I want you to do, hold on. If you know you are sick in your body, If you know you are sick in your body and you have been carrying certain ailments but you've been trusting God let me tell you the scripture it's a very simple thing we're not practicing magic it is scripture put that scripture up again it's in James put that scripture up again put that scripture up again he said the prayer of faith shall heal the sick he said is anyone sick uh-huh Put, put 14. He said, is anyone in trouble? He said, if you are in trouble, what should you do? Pray. Is anyone in trouble? Let him pray. He said, is anyone among you sick? So I'm asking that question. Is anyone sick? If you are sick, come out. If you are sick, come out. That's just a question. He said, is anyone sick? This is not a matter. I'm not, I'm not begging you. If you are sick and you need that agreement, is anyone sick? Pastor Sam, please come. Is anyone sick? He said, let them come. Now, when they come, he said, let him call for the elders of the church. Ushers, please help me to put people to stand well. He said, he said, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's what he said. Now, what did Jesus say? He says, go to the next verse. And what? What, please? Please, what's the next verse? The what? Not the oil, oh. Please, don't mix it up. Because some of you will take oil and now go home. No, no, not, not the oil, oh. Some of you want to keep the oil and keep it somewhere. No, not the oil, oh. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The oil becomes the access point to what's going to happen right now. So, the moment they lay hands on you, Pastor, you come out, please. You guys, Pastor Sam, please come, come here. The moment they lay hands on you, Sister, so please come out, please. The moment they lay hands on you, the moment they lay hands on you, listen, listen. I've been preaching this over and over again. The Bible says, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Please jump to it. Matthew 21, I think verse 22. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, can we read it together? And whatever things you ask in what? Prayer. Do what? believe it, you do what? You receive. Oh, tell someone, say, I receive my healing right now. I receive it. Now, now, let it be very clear. You must say it first that it has been freely given. Remember the scripture I read to you guys. Say it to yourself, my healing has been freely given. Okay, so the, what we're now doing is receiving. 
It has been given. So we're not trying to get, no, we are receiving what has been given. It's like me saying, it's like me saying, hey guys, this belongs to you. I'm telling you, this belongs to you. So you already know it's yours, right? Now, but it's still with me. So you need to receive. Bible say, ask. Seek. Knock. For he that asketh, receive it. So that's what we're just doing. So we're practicing scripture that we are asking. So I want you to believe and say, Lord, as I come to you right now, I've come to receive. I didn't come to beg because freely, freely, he has given to us. So we're not begging. We're just saying, he didn't say beg and you shall receive. He said ask. So we're just saying, Lord, I ask. And let me tell you one last thing as they lay hands on you. Healing is children's bread. Church, you got to a, a woman, a Phoenician woman came to meet Jesus and said, please, can you heal my daughter? Jesus said, hey, we can't give children's bread to dogs. To dogs. But look at what, what the woman said. The woman said, I agree. But even dogs, they eat crumbs from the rich man's table. Ah! Jesus looked at the woman. Wow, what a revelation. So what he said was simple. If dogs can be healed, what do you think will happen to children? It's your right. So the moment they lay hands, believe that you have received. Please don't confess. Now, when you believe you have received, put Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, please. The moment you believe, after the finish prayer, this is what you must operate. Philippians 4, 8. Please, Philippians 4, 8. The moment they finish praying for you, you switch to this scripture. I want to be meditating this scripture. The moment we finish praying, just meditate this scripture. Finally, brethren, what things so other, at what? True. What things noble, just, pure, lovely, are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, do what? meditate. What that means is that please don't meditate and say, I'm not sure it happened. I'm still feeling it. My body's still... Mm, 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 mm. The moment you feel it, go here. The moment you are sensing the bad news, check it. Is this true? Is it just? If it is not, then you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Don't worry, we'll give you all the scripture. You go to 10 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. The moment you start having that feeling, for the weapons of our warfare, I know what? I know cannot. But they are what? To what? Next verse. Next verse, please. Next verse. Casting down arguments. Now, arguments are things I would say you are, you are still feeling you are still feeling it. You are still feeling the pain. You cast it down. So I received my healing that day. I did. I received that healing. I got it. Is that okay? Are you ready? So when you are laying hands on them, I want you to listen. As you want to pray for someone, say, What is it? This is, the, this is the principle. What is it? And the person says, this. He said, now, you pray for the person. What is it? Oh, my great. Le palige dosh. Receive your healing. That spirit. Now, you'll be sensing some of them are natural. Some of them are spiritual. So, some of them, you may need to rebuke a spirit immediately. Rebuke that spirit. Rebuke that spirit. Some of them, you might just need to lay hands and say, be healed. Okay? So, all right. Are we ready? Lift up your hand and just worship the Lord. And if you're at the back, please pray in the spirit. We're coming to you now so that we do what we need to do. Are we ready now? Please, can we move? Can, can we come on this side? So stop it. Come on this side. Where's our oil? Come to this side. Can you get can you get oil for her, please? Or you can you can be with somebody and be moving the oil. Go to this side, go to this side. Let's start from there. Let's start from there. Let's move fast. Let's move fast. Let's move fast. Let's start praying for them. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Just ask, what is it? You pray. What is it? You pray. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. Now, if you are watching us online, the prayer of faith, if you are watching us online, just trust the Lord and agree with me. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. Just hold on one minute. If they finish praying for you, you can go to your seat. If they finish praying for you, go to your seat. Okay. When they pray for you,
you, you go to your seat. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. 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 Jabeleke prekedosh. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. It is the prayer of faith that heal the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith. When they finish praying for you, just go to your seat. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. 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 Will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. Hallelujah. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Now let's move to the let's move to the deeper level now. So this next move, they will bring the oil to you. I want you to dip your hand in the oil, then get ready for those prayers. Can we can we take the oil to the people? Let them dip their hand and let's get ready for the three the three prayers. If you're watching us, if you have an anointing oil, no problem. If you have an anointing oil home. Please, you can get it ready. So, we want to pray for the oil of gladness. We want to pray for the oil to break the yoke. We want to pray for the oil of favor. So, let's start. Let's start with the oil. That's why I said, find a way to manage what you have. But if you finish praying one and you need another one, please just raise your hand and dip your hand again as the Lord helps you. But if you want to use the one in your hand, you continue to use it. Now, he said, it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off the neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, we're praying right now. Lord, if there's any pattern that is not in pattern with you, if there's any tree that has been planted which you did not plant, say, whatsoever my father has not planted shall be removed. I don't care what it is. Lord, let your anointing destroy the yoke. Let your anointing lift the body. Let every yoke concerning my destiny, that yoke that is not of God, Jesus said we should take his yoke and we should take his own body. So any yoke that is not the yoke of Jesus, let that yoke be broken now in the name of Jesus. Now you can begin to pray for yourself. When you pray for yourself and you are convinced, lay your hands on yourself. The moment you pray and you are convinced, then lay hands on yourself. Let every yoke be broken. Let every yoke be broken. Let every yoke. I don't care what that yoke is. If it's not the yoke of Jesus, it's not the yoke of God. Let that yoke be broken. Let that unnecessary burden. Let that unnecessary pattern following me and following my family. Let that yoke be broken. Where's that yoke from? He said, that yoke shall be broken. 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 Pray for yourself. 
Anytime you feel you need to lay hands on yourself, then lay hands on yourself. Anytime you sense that now, let me lay hands on myself. Lay hands on yourself. But we break the yoke. Let that body be removed. We break that yoke. We break that yoke. Please just give us 10 minutes to close. I break that yoke. Let the yoke be broken. Let the yoke be broken. I don't know the yoke that might be concerning my hope. The yoke that might be concerning my career. I've just been seeing some hands that are not God. I break that yoke. Let that yoke be broken. Let that body be broken. It's not supposed to be part of my life. I break that yoke. By the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. The body shall be lifted. By the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. The body shall be lifted. By the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. Amen. Let's go to the second one because of time. Oil of gladness. If there's a spirit of heaviness or depression, there's also the spirit of joy and gladness. This implies that joy is also a spirit. Now, because Jesus, this is a messianic psalm, because he loved righteousness and hate iniquity, he said, the Lord thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow. In Psalm 30, 11 to 12, he said, the Lord will turn. As you anoint yourself today, let there be a turning. The Lord will put upon you the spirit of joy today. There will be a stirring up that will consume every heaviness. Now begin to pray for one minute. Begin to pray for one minute. Begin to pray for one minute. Oh Lord, turn every morning into dancing. If it is not for you, then pray for whoever. If it is not for you, then pray for if it's your sister. Lord, turn every morning, every morning into dancing. Let every sackcloth be removed. Let every sackcloth be removed. Let the spirit of joy, we come against the spirit of heaviness. We come against the spirit of heaviness. We come against the spirit of heaviness. Le kapale te shanda katabale. Je brekete le kapale gade. You have put up my sackcloth and gathered me with gladness. Let every heaviness be removed. Turn my morning into dancing. Lord, turn my morning into dancing. Lord, turn my morning into dancing. Collect get to play. Ah! Lord, turn my morning into dancing. Let dancing begin in my house, oh God. Let dancing begin in my house, oh God. Pray, 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 pray. Two more minutes. We break every spirit of heaviness. 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 Oh, let joy, let joy arise. Let joy arise. Let joy arise. We stand the spirit of joy in our heart. We stand the spirit of joy. We come against every spirit of sorrow. Every sorrow spirit, we come against you. You will not lose your joy. You will not lose your joy again. You will not lose your joy again. Amen. Finally. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.